Hey friends, welcome to the part 65. Okay, this is the YouTube handle. You can search for shots, playlist videos, 500 plus videos, 3000 plus questions on what? On cloud certifications, AWS, Azure Cloud, Google Cloud, Snowflake, and WBI. Stay tuned, stay focused. We will proceed with the questions discussion. We have uploaded part 64 in the members area, Cloud Kernel member. You can click the join button below this video or you can look for the link in the description. Become a Cloud Kernel member, gain access to so many questions. The way this channel works is there will be some free questions for subscribers. There would be some paid questions. Together, it will bump up your chances to clear the certification. Let us look at the next question here. Which are the following best practices for IAM? What is IAM? Whenever you have someone who wants access to your system, you create an IAM. You're trying to give it some authentication, some authorization and so on. So this primarily works for authentication. Who does the authorization? Authorization is done by the application. Authentication is done by applications like you use IAM or uh, with a combination of Active Directory and so on. Okay. So it is asking what is the best practice? Best practice means you should definitely follow these practices in order to get better results. Like if you are playing cricket, people say, okay, your footwork should be great in order to play good shots. Okay, similar to that here, if you see option C, rotate credentials on regular basis. This is a, a no brainer, you know, because if someone hacks your credentials, if they know your credentials and you do not rotate it or rotate means you keep changing it if you change it every two years, this guy can still access your system for two years. So do it on a regular basis, which can be once a quarter or once a month. That is point number one. Second is you can configure multi-factor authentication. What is multi-factor authentication? You know, nowadays banks, they, you can use your credentials to get in online banking. After that, they if you are doing a high value transactions like uh, in India, more than 50,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees, it gives you an OTP in your on your mobile phones. So there can be some app where it will generate a code and you will have to use. That is the secondary form of authentication. You need to authorize both before you can do a high value transaction. Same thing happens here. You need to use this so that your environment, people who are accessing the environment is absolutely foolproof and secure. Option A is totally wrong it is illogical you should never 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 it is not a best practice it is a worst practice never use root user for daily access option b it says use access keys and secret access keys on ec2 instances see secret access key it is what is it is like secret like your password you should never share it so this is what i am also does you should never allow to retrieve your secret okay so that should not be used this is not a good practice this is and hence b is wrong d says you create a shared set of access keys for system administrators that means multiple administrators can use it can share the moment you see share it is it is wrong man. it is wrong you should never share your partner similarly you should never share your access keys your credentials and so on so these two would be my final answers these are the best practices remaining were not now this is the next question okay here the moment i see the word dns record and the moment i see failover routing policy it reminds me about route 53 it is a cost effective way to route end users to internet applications your applications you can have different ways of routing you can have different routing policies like simple routing policy failover routing only if a failover happens you set up a active passive failover geolocation routing when you route based on the location of the users for example netflix if you are in india they will route it they will route you to a server which is very close to you instead of routing you to a server in us so geo approximately routing policy works similar way latency routing policy so there are so many routing policies you need to know all of them and at least for your aws uh, solution architect certifications so route 53 would be my answer but why not a b and d so this is easy to use cloud customer service contact center if you want to set up a contact center then you use amazon connect like you want to have your own support center l1 l2 support you can use it now application load balancer is all about balancing the loads you have ec2 instances so many and you can balance the loads so here we are not talking about balancing the loads and waf it will help you with common exploits it is a security solution 
here we are not talking about security we are talking about routing policy for health checks so route 53 would be my final answer now let us jump into the next question here as a customer you have certain applications you want to move to aws that is the bottom premises and based on the applications needs you want to use different types of instances different configurations cpu memory storage we want to use different configurations yes buddy ec2 instance has it all it provides you resizable compute capacity virtually any workload and based on memory cpu etc there are so many instance types you see this m7g mac and so on if you need compute optimized you go for these compute optimized if you want memory optimized you have like in memory processing and so on you have bi applications like tableau or power bi and so on you use this you have accelerated computing for gaming applications you have storage optimized if you want uh, instances very heavy on storage and so on so you see it is so easy to answer these questions ec2 is the answer but you might ask why not lambda cognito and athena lambda it is serverless so it will not uh, it is not about servers so you cannot even choose what type of cp ram or storage capacity you have you cannot choose this so lambda is wrong now cognito cognito is a identity and access solution if you want to give somebody access for example you log in into you have a gmail id you can use it to work with facebook and other apps instagram and so on as well that is done by services like cognito in real life we use athena when we want to build bi applications we use quicksight we use athena or we want very complex queries big queries high performing queries we use athena because it works on petabyte set of data also here we are not talking about high volume data query and hence this is wrong so this would be my final answer so if you have not yet subscribed please do so help yourself clear the certifications and not stick to basics go for intermediate and advanced certification as well this channel will help you with all of those there is a part 64 which has been uploaded for cloud kernel members do become a cloud kernel member use the link in the description for that purpose stay tuned stay focused see you in the next part